Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So today we're gonna to take a look at how we can employ conditional formatting with some formulas to prepare a Gantt chart or a project timeline. I know you've seen those uh, awesome Excel files where you have like a task list with a start and end date and it would visualize how this would flow in time by highlighting different cells and building out the timeline. It's really easy to do that with a chart, but if you wanna do it in Excel itself and use the cells, it gets a bit trickier. So we're gonna take a look first at how to figure out which tasks falls where on our timeline and then we're gonna figure out how to translate that into conditional formatting. We also have our timeline be dynamic, so it would either be a daily timeline, a weekly or a monthly one. This would give us much more versatility when we want to take a look at how our project would progress over time. By the way guys, if you're enjoying the content, thumbs up will be awesome and a sub to the channel will be amazing. Let's go ahead, open Excel and dive straight in. I'm here in Excel and uh, this is the sheet that I want to use to set up my project timeline and I have some pre-formatting here so we have our header uh, row here and uh, our tasks and what we know is for each task we have the duration and it's important to know that this is in working days so if it's a, a duration of five days that's gonna be one week there's a really easy formula that uh, we can use. So we can use the workday formula. So we grab our start date and we offset that with the duration of our workdays. So a number of workdays. And this gives us from 4th of October being Monday, we get to the 8, those are four days, and the 8 is Friday. Then our next task is gonna start once this task is complete and we can copy this down, grab those two and copy those down. And there's a caveat here and it's the fact that I wanna run the legal due diligence at the same time as the financial due diligence. So I'm just gonna make that follow the due diligence data gathering. So those will start at the same time and at the same time before, because they both take 10 business days. Okay, next thing we wanna do is we wanna have a starting day for our timeline. And uh, this is gonna be our date here, introduction and signing an MDA. This is, uh, I have it blue because it's a, it's a constant that we typed in. And uh, this is a bit too wide. I want this to be like really narrow as the, the rest are here. So I'm just gonna, open the format cells with control one and orient that to the side 90 degrees okay and then you can just bring it together just copy the formatting from here and paste it here next thing we want to do is we want to be able to build our timeline off of this date and uh, for the purpose of this we want to be able to switch how our timeline looks so let's make this an input cell, some outside borders, and we want to be able to pick if it's a daily, weekly, or a monthly timeline. I'm gonna go to data and uh, go to the data validation. I'm gonna allow a list, and instead of selecting it, I'm just gonna type in here daily, weekly, monthly, and now, I can pick what type of a timeline I want. Let's start with daily. So when our timeline is a daily, what we want is we want each of those next consecutive days to be the previous day plus one day. It's gonna include the uh, Saturdays and Sundays and we're gonna note those so it would be evident when, uh, when it's the weekend. We also want to make sure that we're thinking about when we change that to weekly. So when we change it to weekly, we want it to show always the Monday of the next week. And if we change to monthly, we want it to show the first date of each month. So let's go ahead and start typing our formula. Let me just zoom in a bit so it's 
even easier to see. I'm gonna start with an if statement and I wanna check if C7 and I'm gonna fix that with F4. If it's equal to daily, what we want is we want the grab the previous date and add one. Simple as that. Otherwise, if it's not daily, I'm gonna check if it's weekly. So if dollar sign C dollar sign seven, sorry, seven is equal to weekly, then what we want is we want to grab this date and we want to add a number of days. And this number of days is gonna be seven minus the weekday which is this weekday and we're gonna give the return type as two and two would give us the numbers one through seven one being monday and i'm actually gonna add one to this because what this formula does let's look at it here because here it's all jumbled up because of the formatting so what we're doing is we're grabbing the previous date and we wanna add the next Monday after that. So we need to grab this date, present it uh, in terms of one through seven for Monday through Sunday, and then subtract that from seven to get the end of the week that contains the F10 date. And then we're adding one, and we could have done that by uh, just having it being eight here, but it's much clearer that way. So we're finding the end of this week that contains our previous date. And then we're just adding one to move into the next week. If that's not true, so remember we're in uh, the if that's part of the, of the false statement of our initial if. We're gonna start a third if and again, dollar sign C, dollar sign seven. If this is equal to monthly, then we want to use a different formula, which is EO month, which gives us the end of the month. We're grabbing the same start date and we're moving it by zero months. So that way we're gonna find the end of this month, the last date of this month and we're just adding one to move to the next month. I wanna be able to easily check that my formula is working correctly. So basically, if, uh, if it's not daily, then it will check if it's weekly. If it's not weekly, it will check if it's monthly. And if it's something else, so we messed up something, we're gonna return error. I think when we have three ifs, so we need to close uh, three brackets and we have an error somewhere. Let's try and see where it is. Yeah, and you can see here that I have single quotes. Change that to double quotes and now it's gonna work. So in theory, if we just copy this to the side, let's say all the way down to here, Control R to copyright, we should get consecutive days. So 10, 4, 10, 5, 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Now let's see what happens if we change to weekly. We know that this is a Monday and we're getting next Monday after seven days, after seven days and so on. If we move to monthly, we're just getting the first date of each following month. Now our timeline adjusts based on the granularity we wanna see. Let's go ahead and start working on a few, on adding a few more details up here. So I wanna have the day here. So what is the day of the week? And uh, I want to show it as a single letter so it would fit here, but we don't have such a formatting in Excel. So what we can do is we can use a, a combination of formulas. So we're going to grab the left one symbol, but uh, it's going to be grabbed from the text representation of our weekday number and be from F10 and I want it to give me, actually here, I want 17. So numbers one Sunday through seven Saturday, 17. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing the weekday of this date and then I'm converting it to text in this specific format. So it's gonna give me the first three letters of the day. 
and then I'm grabbing the one symbol on the left of the string and it's Monday. Copy this to the side and we can see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and it goes on like that. If we grab weekly, it's gonna be just Mondays and monthly is gonna be whatever day um, the beginning of the month ends on. Go back to daily. And the third thing I wanna add is I wanna have my week number, week num, grabbing the date and for the return type, I'm actually gonna grab this thing here, 21. For some reason, those two didn't work really well. System one, system one. This one, system two, worked much better. So 21. And this is week 40. Copy this to the side. And the easiest way to check if this worked properly is to just switch to weekly and each consecutive day should be a new week. All that's left now is to figure out a way to build our timeline here. And we're gonna use a really simple approach, but uh, before we go into the conditional formatting, let's try and figure it out um, here as formula. So what we wanna do is we wanna build our uh, timeline out of ones and wherever uh, it's out of the of the task, it's gonna be a zero. In order to, to have our um, formula here work with whether it's uh, daily, weekly, or monthly, we're gonna have three sets of, um, of checks that we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and start typing those out. So if, and in our if, we wanna have uh, or, we want one of three cases to be uh, fulfilled in order for us to deem that this task falls on this date or this period if this is weekly or monthly. And each of these three logical uh, checks consist of two things that we want to be uh, true at the same time. We'll use AND. The first two checks that we wanna do in order to say, okay, this falls between those two or, or those two fall somewhere between the month that this represents or the week is we want to see first if C13, our starting date, and uh, I'm going to lock this, I'm going to lock it on the column side only so that we, when we copy our formula to the side, it would still stay locked at column C. We want to check if this is equal or larger than our uh, timeline date here. And uh, also let's fix that only on the row so we can copy our formula down. At the same time, we want our start date again fixed on the column side to be lower than the next date in our timeline. And let's fix that on the row side. So what this basically says is if this date falls between this and this or is equal to this, then we should definitely highlight this here because this date would be a part of the timeline for this task. The next check that uh, we're gonna do or the next case where, um, where we'll get our one here is another end of uh, two other checks. And here we're gonna look at the end date. So in order for us to highlight this, we either want the end date and I'm gonna fix that on the column side. We want it to be bigger than the start date and not equal, just bigger than the start date. And I'm gonna fix that on the row side. And at the same time, we want the end date, again, fixed on the column side to be below the next date here. And I'm gonna fix that on the row. So what this uh, set of conditions does is it checks if this date, if the end date is somewhere between those two dates, then it should still be considered part of the timeline for, for this, for this uh, period here. And uh, the, the reason for this is that if this was weekly 
and the end date is somewhere between the Monday, the start of the week, let's say it's on Thursday, it would fall in this condition and it would be true and this would be highlighted because a portion of this week will be where we end this task. Okay, and the third case, we want two things here. We want our F10, our timeline date fixed on the row side to be above our start date. So it's after our start date fixed on the column side. And at the same time, we want it to be to fix it on the row side. We want it to be below our end date fixed on the column side. Our first condition pretty much checked when this starts and it made sure that if this date falls into this period up to the next period starting date, you're going to highlight this because this is where we start. The second one does the same thing but for where our task ends and this one makes sure that everything in between is also captured. So if our uh, timeline date is after our start date, so our task is already running. But at the same time, if it's before our end date, then this should also be highlighted because even if it's not the full week, some portion of it would still fall into the timeline for this specific task. Hope that made sense. And uh, if any of those three is true, so if either the start, the end or the middle of our uh, timeline blocks that are going to appear here, if any of those is true, we want to highlight this cell and in this case let's just do if any of this is true we want one otherwise we want zero okay now we get a one here let's copy this to the side let's copy it down you immediately see that our task here runs for four days then our next task starts here and it runs for 11 days, but remember those are seven business days. So in those 11 days, you have two weekends. So it's seven business days and four weekend days. Then we have this task running for one day and so on and so forth. What happens if we change to weekly? This week up to Friday, we're done with this task. We start this task on Friday. So it's still in the same week. But then it goes into the next week and there's a little bit up to Tuesday. This is 19th, then this is uh, 18th, the Monday up to Tuesday, we go into this week. Then this thing happens within the same week. This thing starts this week and runs for another two and everything works. And you can see here where we made those two that are, are running in parallel. We have this in parallel. And that's pretty much it. The only thing uh, left to do is to translate this formula into conditional formatting. And this is one way to do it. You can have it as a formula here and use conditional formatting to uh, color, uh, let's say, the ones green and the zeros uh, yellow or, or whatever. But it's, it's much cleaner to do it as a conditional formatting. I'm going to delete all those except for the one that we did. And uh, I'm actually gonna grab this formula and just back it up here. So what we need for conditional formatting is we can we can apply conditional formatting based on a formula, but uh, we cannot do it with this formula directly. We need just something that returns true or false. So we just need the logical expression out of the if, the or statement, the logical test. I'm just gonna copy that, exit here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything here from my timeline up to here and I can always copy the formatting. I'm gonna go to home, conditional formatting, new rule. I wanna use a formula to determine which cell to format. So I'm gonna paste this here and the best part is that these references will apply to the first cell of our selection. And as it moves to the side and it moves down, it's going to change the references, but it's going to keep what we locked. So it should work automatically like that. Format and uh, 
all we want to do is we just want to make it orange whenever uh, a task is running. Okay, and it didn't work. And there's a simple explanation for that. So we only kept copied the or, the logical test. And once we pasted it, it added those quotes. And uh, that's a really easy thing to miss. So now when we click OK, apply, and you can see our timeline appeared here. Go ahead and play with it. So if we switch that to monthly, you can see that everything that happens in the same month. So this starts in October, then moves to November. This all happens in November, moves to December, and so on and so forth. If we go to daily, we get everything here spread out over time. A nice touch that we can add is uh, to have our Saturdays and Sundays somehow blocked or something like that. So we're gonna use the days here to do that. I'm gonna start with the selection and I want also the dates and the, the day of the week and the, the week number to also be like grayed out or something like that. So I'm gonna select this whole thing here. I'm gonna go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine. And my formula will be, so I'm from this starting point, I want F11, but I want to fix the row because I always wanna be looking at the, at the 11th row, no matter at which row I am. And I want this to be equal to S. So whenever this is S, it's gonna apply the same formatting. And the only thing I'm gonna do here is go into pattern style and uh, just pick this one. Okay, okay. And you see now that Saturdays and Sundays are blocked out. Gives some much nicer representation. And uh, the best part is that this whole thing is completely dynamic. So we decided that this takes two days and everything is pushed to the side. This all works uh, no matter what you select here. So if you go to weekly, obviously we're only looking at the Mondays. So nothing is grayed out, nothing is blocked. But uh, if you go to monthly, then you're gonna see that some months start on a Sunday or a Saturday, so it's gonna show grayed out. And of course, the best way to, to look at that is uh, on a daily basis. As you see, once you figure out the logic behind what you want to achieve, it's really easy to translate it to conditional formatting. And this gives you a very powerful tool to be able to prepare dynamic spreadsheets without relying on uh, macros or VBA code or complex formulas. Thank you guys for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and catch you next one. But uh, in Excel, it gets a bit trickier. So, <clears throat> but uh, if you wanna do it in Excel itself and use the chart, but, <clears throat> by the way guys, if you're <clears throat> let's go ahead open excel and see how